My name is Bob Swart. Welcome to this Red in Action Datasnap XE tutorial video. These videos consist of three parts. In the first video, I'll show how to create a Datasnap server application and which options the wizards offer us to create Datasnap server applications. In the second tutorial video, we'll discuss how to set up authentication and authorization to secure the Datasnap server application. The third video will discuss how to create a Datasnap client application connecting to the secure Datasnap server application. Datasnap server security consists of a number of topics. First of all, we need to make sure we have a secure connection, the transport. This can be ensured by using IIS with HTTPS or by using TCP IP with an RSA and PC1 encryption filters. Second point is authentication. Login, where you get a username and, in our case, a hashed password. And the third topic of Datasnap security is authorization. Who can do what? And Datasnap offers the uh, role-based authorization. But we'll start with authentication now. Implement the login, the authentication to get access to the application. This is managed in the uh, web module, where there's the DS authentication manager which has two events, the on-user authenticate and the on-user authorize. The on-user authenticate, that's the login method that we need to override and we can implement it not with a valid equals true, but with some code to actually make a connection to a database, in this type the DIRT database, to verify the uh, user. Now, the, the on-user authenticate method gets uh, a number of arguments, protocol, context, user and password and we should send the hashed, hashed version of the password over the wire and we can return valid uh, as well as we can add roles to the user roles, the collection of user roles now instead of using a T-SQL connection component on the data module I want to create one dynamically uh, as well as a uh, SQL query component the first thing that this onuser authenticate method must do is check if we have a secure connection. Remember this is the ASAP DLL that I want to deploy on IIS using HTTPS. So if it's a library, if it's an, uh, indeed a ASAP DLL and not some standalone HTTP uh, application, then if the protocol is HTTPS, lowercase, then we are valid, otherwise it's not a library and we're apparently being used in a standalone or console. HTTP application, then I just ignore the HTTPS uh, requirement. If valid, then we can create a SQL connection, uh, no login prompt of course, drive name MS SQL, as Vendelib we need the uh, native SQL Server 2008 library, and then using the parameters I can specify the host name pointing to my database server, uh, this laptop or another machine. Uh, the database, which is DIRT, and then of course my username uh, and password to log into the database, which is quite different from a username and password to log into the Datasnap server, of course. Then I create a query, set the connection to the query to the SQL connection on the database, and the command text select the user ID as well as the role from the user table where name equals username and password hash the field in the table equals the password and this time remember it's important to send the hashed version of the password over the wire when, you, when your client connects and not the real password. The real password is never stored, the hashed password is. Now this query has two parameters, the username parameter and a password parameter, so we should uh, collect two params by name, set the strings to the username and password, and we can open the query. If it's not enter file, then we found a user with a role. So we can actually assign uh, valid to true. And now I want to uh, put the user ID and put it in the session. Now remember in the previous uh, server method that I showed you, I used the session manager with a get thread session. Now get thread session can also be used to put data using a key and a value. In this case I can define a key user ID. I put the value SQL query fields 0, which the first field, the user ID, uh, get it as string and put it inside my data in the get thread session. And this means that I, later on I can retrieve that data. For example, 
when a server method uh, get all issues is being executed, that server method can go to the thread session to get the data for the user ID to know on beforehand which user is executing this particular method. So which user ID should be substituted for a parameter in that particular query. Also, in SQL query fields 1, that's the role, we can get the roles. Um, if the roles is not empty, then we can assign it to the user roles. And user roles are an important part of the uh, authorization later, where server methods are secured by specific rules that are allow them or deny them the execution of the server role. And if there's no query, no uh, uh, record found by this query, then valid is false. And in the end, we must, of course, close and free the query and close and free the SQL connection in our uh, event handler. Point two, go to the data snap security. Right now we've seen a number of security issues already. Um, the application that I've building, uh, I'm building is an IIS, uh, ISAPI DLL using HTTPS, which means it's a secure uh, HTTP connection. Alternative, we could use TCP IP with RSA and the PC1 filters to encrypt the connection. I've already shown authentication. The login uh, method has been uh, implemented, the on-use authenticate with the username and hash, hash password. And now it's time to go to authorization, where this particular server method getIssues should only be executed, should only be called by a user in the manager role and not by a tester or a developer. The developer shouldn't be able to view all potential issues and a tester shouldn't be able to view all potential issues from all users. Only a manager should be able to execute that method. And that means we need to add a specific attribute, the T role auth attribute, uh, for the server method to make sure that only uh, the manager can execute it. Going back to the code, we can go to this get issues method and add the custom attribute. It's a T role auth attribute and now specifying a string manager. Now this is a literal string defining that when a user has a role manager, then that particular user is allowed to execute this method. Otherwise the user may not be allowed. However, this is only enforced if we uh, also implement the on authorized event handler of the authentication uh, uh, component. Note, however, that if you only set this uh, custom attribute and you compile the code, you get a warning, the unsupported language feature custom attribute. This attribute right now is an unknown attribute, and as a result it has no effect. So this warning should be uh, really uh, turned into an error, and you can do that with the uh, tools options, uh, because now it has no effect, this t -row attribute. Um, we should add the... Uh, DS auth unit to the users clause, and if we now recompile the project, oops, and if we now recompile the project, now this property, this uh, custom attribute is known, so now it will have the required effect. To enforce that only the manager may execute the get issue server method and not a developer or a tester, we must, however, go back to the web module and implement the user authorize event handler of the DS authentication manager. By default, uh, it assigns true to valid, which means that anyone can execute any server method, even if we've specifically added uh, roles for the authorized and the denied parts uh, for the server method. So we should replace this valid equals true by some custom code using a user role and assigning false uh, to valid and then only assigning true to valid if we look through the authorized roles of an event object, the event object, the server method in this case, and for each user rule in the event object's user roles, uh, which is our manager, for example, uh, we see if it's part of the authorized uh, roles, and in that case we assign true to valid. So if we are the user manager, and if our user manager is part of the explicitly authorized uh, roles for get issues, then we should be able to execute the get issues. Note that the T role auth gets two arguments. The first one is the explicit role, uh, the role that's explicitly approved, allowed to execute it. And as a second one, we could say, well, this is a specific role that is explicitly denied. 
However, this one is uh, ignored if we implement the uh, on-use authorized in this way, saying you are not authorized to do something unless you explicitly uh, uh, permit it. Uh, the other way around could be to assign true to valid and assign false only if you are part of the denied roles instead of the approved roles. Since I'm only using the approved roles, I typically remove the denied roles and only use one argument here and implement this one um, as follows. So you're only allowed to do something uh, uh, when you're explicitly allowed to execute it. This code should get one little extension because if there are no authorized roles, then it should still be valid to execute the server method. Otherwise, for example, this server method, get current user roles, would not be able to, be, uh, to execute um, because there are no authorized roles specified for this particular uh, server method. Any questions? Feel free to email me at bob at ebob42.com. Also feel free to visit my website www.drbob42.com for more articles on Delphi and Datasnap. And if you're interested in a full detailed Datasnap XE courseware manual, be sure to check out www.ebob42.com slash courseware for PDF manual with email support and all updates. Thanks for your attention and hope to see you next time.